Okay, this is a familiar scene to many of you pet lovers. Your pet is struggling after having become tangled up in a tether. The water or food bowl has been tipped over and your best friend is a tangled mess. It's actually happened to me. That scenario also propelled the Michigan man to do something about it. With the help of our next guest, meet George Davison, AKA Mr. D. He is CEO and founder of Davison and creator of the Davison Inventing Method. And of course, Invention Land. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. I got to tell you, that is something that has happened to me, and it breaks your heart because you might have left the house maybe for 30, 45 minutes, and the right. dog is there, you know, in the South Florida sun, gasping for water. Absolutely. It's just very sad. It is. But let's talk about your inventions. Um, are most inventions born out of a need, a necessity? Well, just like this guy, his his idea came out of a need. His pet's bowls flipped over. He's trying to get his lawnmower by that thing sticking out of his grass all the time. It's more work. So he's an industrious kind of guy. He's got a creative brain. And he says, hey, I want to do something about this. And I'd like to make this better for my pet and for me because I don't want to get down there and unscrew that right. corkscrew out of the out of the ground every week. So if we have an idea for a product or our viewers are out there saying, you know what, I've always had this idea in my mind and I just haven't really put it into place. What advice would you give them? Because a lot of people say, could I do it? Yeah. You know? Come to Invention Land. That's what you should do. Just come to Invention Land. We'll show you how all these things work and how they come to be. And you guys really take that idea and either move forward or kind of you're realistic and you say, no, sorry, right. it ain't going right. to happen. Sometimes you start off with an idea and it doesn't look all that promising. And by the time you're finished getting input from a lot of people, designers and engineers and whatnot, you make this idea into something just beautiful. And yeah. let me tell you, it doesn't happen overnight. And you, know, I've, you and I have talked about this. It's a long process. In fact, you, you have yeah. a great thing on your website that's called Webisode Series, Dare to Invent. I want my viewers to see because it's kind of like a, a great A to Z, if you will. Let's yeah. take a look. Great. Meet Ed Yoder. He's an active tinkerer who loves his dog, Toby. He's also a guy who likes to get things done, like mowing the lawn. But his pet steak in the yard always seemed to be in the way. I wanted a pet steak different than any other pet steak. I went out to the local uh, tractor place to try to find one. The girl there taking care of that section. I told her I want a pet steak that's below ground so I don't stumble over it. And she says, well, if you think you're so smart, why don't you have that one? Ed wants a new kind of dog tether. You know, one that he doesn't yank out every time he has to go mow the grass. We don't want our furry friends to run away get hit by cars or end up in our neighbor's yards. Our mission is to create a better tether device for Ed and his dog, Toby. I absolutely relate to it. In fact, I've actually hit a stake in the backyard with my lawnmower. Actually, I hit it with my wheel instead of the blade. Jason got the nod for Ed's idea. His team had to invent a pet stake that was easy to use, cost-effective to make, and appealing to consumers. The team came up with a design that takes a standard pet stake and surrounds it with a cone that has a hole in the bottom for drainage, and then you screw it down into the ground so someone can mow over it. During our meeting with the Hugs Pet Company, an executive said, what about food and water? One of the big problems that dogs have when they're tied up or tethered up is they knock their water bowl over and they knock their food bowl over. I had the distinct pleasure of going back to Jason and his team and letting him know that Hey, we got to go back to the drawing board and start over. So the team had to go back to work and redesign Ed's idea to not only solve his problem, but also resolve the food and water problem. The answer was right under their noses. The cone was redesigned in the shape of a two-sided dog bowl that screws into the ground. The world's first humane dog bowl tether had been invented. Before we sent the design to Hugs, we of course had to properly test it. Okay, Clay, so here's the deal. We got you dressed up on a beautiful sunny day. You can spend your afternoon outside, okay? Got a dog bowl. I have a leash strapped to a regular old tether like everybody has at home. Hook you up, okay? Thank you. And we have this costume. Yeah, well, dogs don't I've have got... thumbs. No, we have to. We got to keep it real. I don't want you unhooking yourself. You know, technically speaking, a, a dog has the option of going to the bathroom at any time that they want. <laughs> you have that option as well. Well, good luck and uh, so happy testing. Yeah, Just be a dog, Clay. Okay. Just be a uh, dog. This is nice. Okay. Hey, uh, my my water fell over already. Hey, 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 hey. What are you looking at? 
Okay, Clay. Time for phase two. You look like a thirsty puppy. Clay. Uh, Clay, come on, boy. Uh, come on, boy. You okay? Ready for a drink? I bet, huh? <sighs> what do you think of that? Okay. Yeah, he was definitely relieved when I came up with a better tether. He was thirsty. I gave him a, a, a new bowl that wouldn't spill, filled it with nice cold water. He's a happy puppy. Ed's idea went into production with hugs, and it was ready for the store shelves. Jason's team did a great job of taking Ed's original problem, hugs feedback, and incorporating them all into a final design. With the better tether on its way to becoming a success, we invited Ed to Invention Land for a special treat. Well, there you go. You saw it on paper. Now it's for real. I couldn't have done it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> Clover, come here, girl. Good girl. Yeah, you know what goes in that bowl, don't you? Let's see what we got here. Oh, hold on. I think this might be for you. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it's your first royalty check, Ed. Wow. Congratulations. That is a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> $11,000. <laughs> For us, that's a really rewarding experience. And in Ed's situation, I would say it was particularly rewarding. He had some people who didn't believe in his idea. He did it. He pulled it off. And I'm glad that we could help him do that. Well, I tell you, that's, that's a great feeling. I'm really proud uh, that I invented a more humane way to tie up your pet outside. I know that I'm in the last chapter of the book, and that's good to know that. I did it mostly, and I can make a little mark. Just a small man like me can make a little mark in life. You know what I love about this invention? It's so humane. It is. It's the world's first humane, uh, better tether for your dog and pet. And that guy's making money now too, huh? He is. <sighs> I gotta think of something. I wanna go to invention land. Come on up. Okay. You gonna show me around? You know it. You Bring know your kids. One on one. Thank you, sir. And we look forward to seeing more Dare to Invent stories in the near future. He's gonna stick around with us for a while and to find out more about Dare to Invent and how you can get started with your idea. Come on, if you have it, just visit Davison.com. That's D-A-V-I-S-O-N.com. You will make a lot of money if it works, trust me.